Hello friends and welcome to Episodical Podcast, episode number 25. USA, as it is today, is in a big mess. And not only politically, but also economically. But what's most terrifying is that climate-wise, we are in a very vulnerable position right now. And climate is a common threat to all humanity, but US, as it seems, not even realizing the whole scale of upcoming catastrophes. And what has happened in Lahaina, in Hawaii, just demonstrated how much unprepared we are on a scale of global cataclysms. This conference on October 7th, 2023. It was called Global Crisis, America at the Crossroads 2024. What was presented there, the most shocking information, one of the most shocking clips was regarding what kind of equipment was right there in Hawaii, in Pearl Harbor base and other bases close by. What kind of helicopters, planes, and what kind of ships, including amphibian ships that can travel in the very shallow waters, they can travel to Lahaina despite the coastal reef barriers and so on. All that fairy tales we've heard as an excuse why Navy didn't come. All the equipment they had technologically to provide service when it came to communication between civilians and police departments, fire departments, everything that could possibly be done, but there was never even an order to use that high-class, top-notch equipment to save human lives. It's not the army to blame. People in the army, they were ready to execute any order. That's the thing that the whole system does not operate to save human lives. It was only built and trained to take human lives. It was built to make people disappear across the world. It's very easy to demolish a building with a missile or do whatever. But it's very hard to save human lives. Apparently, this was too hard of a decision for a local governor who took more than two and a half days to request uh, the usage of military for these purposes in Lahaina, way past the time when it was actually the literally the deadline for many people whom we will never find. One of the most shocking video clips was the speech of this gentleman from Lahaina. He said that many cars on the main street in Lahaina were just burnt and many people, they suffocate and their bodies were still there in the position sitting or laying on the ground. And by the time, by the morning, by the next morning, their bodies turned into ash. And what happened next day? A bulldozer came and just took all the cars away from the main streets and then cleaning cars, those that swipe cars from garbage, came through this main street and whatever was left from the people, their ashes, was simply washed away from the street like they've never been there. Of course, how do you expect any numbers? What the government was saying, we're trying so hard to recover whatever was left from the people. How are you going to recover how many people were left if you just wipe the street clean? with all their remains. This is tragic and this reminds very clearly what has happened in Libya at the same time when small babies less than one year old were brought by the sea back to the shore after a terrible flood. Army also arrived next day after the damage was done and only to pick up the bodies from the ocean, pack them into plastic body bags and take away. And this is what we can expect from the government. This is kind of help we can expect from our army. Because up until this day, the call, the urgent call from scientists, from Creative Society volunteers, from people like Egan Chilakian to retrain and repurpose army was never heard by the masses. That was never emphasized by any social media Instead of that, they promote in a new war, as you see, as a way to distract masses from a terrible unpreparedness, from terrible conditions we are living in right now. And when it's hard enough for people to live, you can only imagine what it's like to lose everything, including your close ones, and be left over there in Hawaii with no help. And we've heard during the conference, what did people advise to the president to do with those $700 and which place to stick it into and where to fly after that? Because that's worse than a slap on the face when you disrespect people like that. 
and then at the very same time approving another military budget to gift overseas to maintain a war that everyone wish would never happen as one of the speakers of the conference i was involved and i would be eager to hear your feedback and especially feedback from the people who watched it online because we're seeing clips on tiktok going viral but they get in comments from the people who have not yet seen the conference but i would love to see and hear feedback from you guys who actually watched the conference it's only four hours it's a lot of valuable information and of course Alex, I would love to hear your opinion and what was the most remarkable thing for you. First of all, I would like to address the issues with unpreparedness of our society to the cataclysms. And I don't even know if it is some sort of an oversight that our army is not even geared towards dealing with emergency situations, helping people when this is needed. I think I've heard something about army being there in Switzerland to protect people and help when something like this arises, but I don't know if uh, this is really the case. We have seen that the United States, the most powerful state in the world with the most developed military complex, there was no one even suggesting to go and help people. If one governor that for some reason is waiting other sensible people around should have proposed this kind of help and here we can see to which absurd point we've gotten to in regards to giving away our power and shifting responsibilities because oh it's the governor so no one else is even thinking about how to help people you just, oh, but the governor, people are waiting for a command to be given. They're not offering any suggestions to the higher ranking officials in terms of the information presented there. People who lost everything was really heartbreaking. This also reminded that these things will happen to everyone if we continue to wait and do nothing, if we continue to think about uh, switching to electric cars or uh, not consuming meat or uh, whatever instead of addressing the real causes of the climate change. And that was a very interesting piece of information presented towards the end that now is going viral. The green zones where people will be able to live a little longer when the climatic catastrophes intensify even more. This is scientific data. This was calculated according to the mathematical model that we've been talking a lot on this podcast. The whole continent is red. There are just four zones, four zones that are green, but they're so small. It's four small towns. And even there, you would have to build a shelter, underground shelter, with no more than one floor above the ground. When I was listening to this, I wasn't sure how many people would understand that all this is shown not for you to go rush and uh, sell your properties elsewhere and uh, try to relocate to these green zones while you still can, but for you to realize that it's not because these zones will stay habitable for slightly longer, maybe up to one year longer, but it's not like you would be sipping mojitos in your backyard and enjoying your life nothing will work, you will not have electricity, you will not have running water, shops will not operate, and you will have to somehow survive. We need to understand that there is only one way out of this situation where we continue to live, and this is building another world where human life is the highest value, and to save all human lives, we need to unite scientific potential. I hope this was clear. I was thinking that the guys will tell i mean that john would tell or you or someone else on the set in the studio would tell that guys we were not being serious about you going there selling everything and going there or having gold on you because there's another thing about having something that not a lot of people have and we've seen this a lot in history that people will take it by force from you 
all your gold, all your possessions, and even the place where you live. It's not like you will be there, as I said, sipping mojitos in your backyard. This will not be the case. What was the reception of people in the States, if you have already the chance to get any feedback from your neighbors, maybe, or people you know? Well, yeah, before John presented the map, he actually addressed to the people and he said, yes, there is a way to save humanity, but it's not practical. It's only hypothetical. And it's because of you guys, you would rather rush to the green zones to only prolongate your life for a little bit, for a tiny longer, for maybe an extra year, which is still valuable because life is life. But you would rather waste your resources on that rather than spend your time and the possessions you have right now. Many people have those still the currencies and bank accounts and everything, but nobody's spending a dime besides the participants of the Creative Society project to actually inform other people about this way to preserve human life, preserve our planet, and actually prolongate human life way beyond species level, without disease, without any problems with health, and without any crisis. And this is the life we can obtain if only people who hear about creative society would be actively participating. But instead of that, they start complaining, like that clip of uh, Greta Thunberg, which was hilariously played by one of our participants, Olga, and Olga Thunberg, as we <laughs> called her. <laughs> and yeah, they complain that this creative society is trying to take away from me my old age, my my retirement dreams of getting old in the nursing home and slaving away for the rest of my days for peanuts and obtaining the list of disease I already planned for life. This is the reaction, this is the absurdity we're facing from the people who, I don't know, they detached from reality. And when reality hits, it hits hard. We've seen that tornado devastates a plant in Kentucky in a place where tornadoes shouldn't even be. And then people are shocked. They didn't expect that to happen to them. But how many people we see right now in the comment section saying that this red map is probably some Chinese trying to mess the market of property and buy it cheap, or that BlackRock is trying to use Creative Society to lower the prices for their properties to buy it cheap. We're hearing this stupidity in comment section for some reason. People in a complete denial. And that's desp despite the fact that the uh, forecast of Creative Society is already becoming reality. I would like to remind to everyone that only a few months ago a conference was held by our Italian participants which described exactly what is going to happen to Compi Flergre, all the alarming signs and tremors and everything that tells that there are little time left for Italy itself. And as has been predicted, forecasted by Creative Society for years, Italy is going to be one of the first countries to disappear from the climate change and that country should be evacuated already now. And then voila, we're seeing the articles all over the European press coming up specifically right now, mentioning that, oh yeah, we probably should evacuate the city of Napoli and nearby areas because it seems like the volcano is going to take off pretty soon. Well, yeah, guys, that's going to happen. But what makes you think that your state is going to survive or your home is going to be chosen? So many people who are really thinking they're the chosen ones in every comment section, you will see a lot of people not taking this information serious. They laugh. And I think it's kind of like defensive mechanism. It was described decades ago when patients who have cancer at the lethal stage and they're being told by the doctor that you have certain amount of time to live, but not so long, they go through five stages of denialism until the acceptance. First they try to deny, then they laugh at it, then they bargain, then they accept. I think I skipped one stage, guys. You can write in the comment below the correct list. But the idea is clear that right now people do not want to believe that their state is gonna be gone within five to seven years. And you would rather sell it for a cheaper price to Chinese and BlackRock right now 
If you are selfish and greedy, then buy yourself a piece of land in the green zone and shelter there so you would at least last longer than most of the population. And you've seen the house you're gonna have to get, the one with no windows, the one with ammunition inside, to defend yourself from other people who are gonna come and try to take away what's yours. And this is exactly the scenario we've been prepared for by every Hollywood post-apocalyptic movie. If you remember Mad Max, it's always some group of people who shelter in some mountain, they have enough of water, guns, and fuel, and they live nicely there, and there are savages around trying to take it away from them. So this is a clear pattern of the system of our consumerist approach, which is very natural for our consciousness. We willingly accept to play this game. We are not willing to participate in a different kind of scenario where collectively we can create a request to build self-governing society where no president, no dictator, even if dictator was elected officially on November election, no dictator can usurp the power no dictator can dictate us what to do with our money to send them overseas or not to send them overseas. We don't want to change the system. We willingly play, we complain because it's very convenient to shift responsibility for agent dictator who is shaking hands with invisible people. Blame him and his surroundings that he's the bad one. That the next one, of course, will be better. And the next one is gonna come around and be even worse, as it always turns out. And we've seen that before. You know what was the other feedback from the people? They complained that we dared to laugh at Donald Trump and call him selfish and call him out on his BS and his lies when he was bragging that Obama sent only blankets to Ukraine when Donald Trump, the great, the one and only, sent real weapons to fuel the war. How brave was he of uh, his actions back then and how he's not willing to even recall those right now. Why? Because we're dealing with a pathological, self-centric, egoist liar who will only brag about himself. He will brag about selling merch, president of the apocalypse, once he win the war. And of course, that was a joke in the conference. But many people got so butthurt, they're not willing to accept the fact that no president is going to come and do the job for you. And you're sitting there and shifting responsibility for those people. And now they're trying to laugh at it. But only stupid people laugh. Because smart ones already buying land in those green zones. If you check all the property prices before the conference and after, you can see a slight spike in the prices. So far, it's only slight spike. Very soon, it's going to increase to the point when you will not be able to afford that land anymore. Why? Because you was laughing and because you was hoping for some kind of president to come and do the job of saving yourself instead of you taking care of yourself. This was also a harsh moment in the conference when it was said that what would happen if people in Libya and Lahaina and Morocco would be informed a day before, would we still see so many floating bodies in the water? And the answer is we would still see bodies in the water, but only of those who didn't listen, who laughed at it. And we would see smart people walking on the shore and watching how bodies of people who left and the information and didn't listen are being washed on the shore. And that is the difference between smart people and those who don't have intelligence to comprehend it. We cannot force people to build creative society. It has to be done by choice of the people. And so far we are seeing that people would rather shelter in the green zones rather than take action, which is very simple actions. It's only to start speaking up, make TikTok videos and inform other people, millions of people. But what are we seeing? We're seeing lack of self-responsibility. And w what is the cure from that, Alex, in your opinion? Listening to the conference and what you just said, I had this thought, what are people, what are they afraid of losing if they at least try their best to build this world where we would get everything that we've been talking about, the unconditional basic income, free healthcare, education, health capsule, matter replicator, fuel free generators. I mean, really in good life. What are people trying to not let go of so hard? 
what are they gripping at so hard? What do they like in, really in the world that we live in today? We've just exchanged the last days as well about how our beloved California is dying, people are fleeing, and everything is closing down. San Francisco, Palo Alto, Los Angeles. All the restaurants, all the places people love to go, and they're closing. It's already empty space for rent, but no one will rent it. This is the hard reality that these places will not be rented again. Even when we've been in San Francisco around Christmas, it was in 2021, only one in 10 shops was open after the lockdowns. They did not survive. But when you see that people are not returning, but it's not for the same reason. They're not returning because there's nothing to do, because it's so dangerous that after sunset, you won't see people walking around. And this apocalyptic picture of Christmas Eve, when police cars were all around Union Square, where people were walking around shopping the ice rink and the big Christmas tree, but all around it was like zombie land. We don't want to venture outside this protected area. At the same time, people are not willing to improve their life conditions when you are living in this world that's really crumbling. Everything is falling apart just in front of your eyes. You can no longer deny this being the case. There is a way to turn around and walk in the opposite direction to create a world where everyone would live a great life. And people just laugh at you or tell that you are nuts. Why is that? I don't know. You talked about the five stages of grief. Many people go through these stages. Why not accelerate your understanding of what is really happening and acknowledging what is outside of your window? We've been talking about this. You don't need any other proofs. Just look outside. And I wanted to talk about looking outside your window because when I speak to people, and especially in places where nothing has happened yet, they're looking at me as if I was crazy. They say, what are you talking about? The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, everything is fine. I said, yes, but have you seen all these images from across the world? I understand that you are not concerned maybe for the moment about things happening across the globe, but happening one hour drive from you. I think it's really short-sighted to behave like this and not taking it seriously, not having enough curiosity to go and check this information. We have this natural awareness about bad news, this phenomenon that bad news is spreading faster than good news because we are inclined to pass this important information for survival faster. And somehow this survival instinct was turned off. I don't know even how this happened, but people became numb to the information about climatic disasters happening not far from them. We are trying to crack this programming that was installed and explain, guys, you really have to wake up. Please wake up because this will affect you. Having people around telling, well, yeah, whatever. Just don't tell us anymore. We had so many people talking about the end of the world. In the previous episode, we asked our listeners, what would you do? We had some comments about what shall we do? As usual, I would say, guys, no one will help us besides us doing this thing. I mean, us in general, us as humanity. For thousands of years, we've tried giving away our responsibility actually giving away our power, shifting responsibility and waiting for miracles to happen. Maybe it's time to wake up, to grow up and see that miracles don't happen. If you continue doing the same things, they will not magically start happening all around. But what we are seeing is that things are changing all around us. Uh, there was Aurora Borealis in Switzerland. I wasn't there. I haven't seen it. But it was on the news. One of the main state media said, oh, it was uh, a rare phenomenon. Well, guys, I mean, if it's a rare phenomenon, the hottest month after month of record-breaking temperatures and everything, rainfalls. Just today I had a call for work and we were exchanging just before that and people from Geneva area, they said, oh, it's like plus 26. 
So we are having exceptionally warm autumn. We are recording this on October 9th, so I let you be the judge. Everything is changing and every time people say, enjoy while it lasts. Good weather, it's warm, enjoy while it lasts. Well, guys, we don't want to spoil it to you, but it will not last if we continue doing nothing and just saying that it's not a big deal, just summer temperatures in the middle of autumn. I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? Just before the conference, I had a business trip to San Francisco and I got to see what it looks like in reality. And I was always surprised how do people still live there, despite the fact that the city is so mismanaged and it's been absolute disaster. Even living such a long time in Los Angeles, I was like, okay, in Los Angeles, you have kind of like bad neighborhoods where you shouldn't go at night. But you cannot have that right in the middle of a good district. You have next street is a complete disaster. You have drug addicts. You have some tent cities. You have people shooting forbidden substances in front of police officers. And this time with shocked me. We took an Uber and we were driving by the Bay Bridge. And I was like, excuse me, that was the most beautiful thing about San Francisco, that Bay Bridge, the illumination was gorgeous. I came there in 2013, I was blown away, that thing was beautiful. And now it's off, and he says, that city doesn't have money for the illumination anymore. I'm like, hold on a second. For all the taxes <laughs> we pay in California, I cannot enjoy the illumination on that thing. All the money went where? For free crack pipes for the people? Where did the money go? We were walking down the street with my friends and I was like, let me check this cool French restaurant. I want to go check. It's 4.9 stars on Google reviews. We have to check it. We enter in there. It's almost empty inside. It looks very nice. A lot of love and work has been put in there. And the waitress comes and she's smiling, but you can tell she's a little sad. I was like, like... How's the restaurant doing? How's everything? She goes, well, you know, we're going out of business in 10 days. So you guys are maybe one of our last customers. And I was like, wow, what's happening? What's going on? And she's like, yeah, a lot of businesses in San Francisco are going out. And I was like, how do you feel about it? She's a little scary, (laughs) nervously smiling. But then I think it's going to be fine. Yeah, I'm going to look for another job. But the thing is, even from the video you sent me, you can tell how many restaurants, how many shops, stores, retail businesses went simply out of business with less jobs, less places to live, but more people without a job and with huge rents. The city is going to be a ghost town very soon. With climate, it's exactly the same thing. They're not going to inform you about anything. They pocket in the money and it's normal. And if you were in their shoes, you would do the same. If you would say otherwise, you would lie. And you, you can lie to us, but just answer to yourself. And this is the question that Stephen from New York asked viewers at the conference. He said, imagine yourself sipping coffee in your coffee shop or laying on your couch and you have two buttons. You get $100,000 for each person burning in Lahaina right now. Or you can reject the money and save person's life. Somebody who you never seen, who you know nothing about, and here is 100k. Which button would you press? You would lie to us, but you know your answer, right? And here's the society we live in, in which human life is not valued at all. The suggestion by creative society is to create different system, but what we're seeing complete ignorance from the people who still think that they're going to be fine, that even in this consumerist society, I still do pretty fine because I'm watching my TikToks, I still sit on my couch, still sit in my coffee, why should I go there, inform somebody about creative society and so on? I'm doing pretty fine here. So it seems like the only cure from this blindness, from this complete ignorance and selfishness would be the realization that there is no future. When people are going to realize that there is no tomorrow, there is no tomorrow for you, then they're going to start running around, making chaos, making panic, But the thing is, it's going to be too late by then. That's the problem. Because right now, in order to counteract what is causing the extreme climatic change, we have to have technologies in place, we have to have enough time to counteract it, and we have to have our scientific potential unified. 
that is all possible. There is nothing impossible in it. If you could spread around Black Lives Matter in a matter of one day, we've seen people laying around on the floor screaming, I cannot breathe, because that was terrible what police officer did to George Floyd. But what has been done by our government and ignorance of the military leadership to the people in Lahaina was much worse and there was silence. None of you said, I'm standing with Lahaina. None of you said our government should transfer power back to the people and unify scientific potential and retrain the army to save civilians from the wildfires, from the earthquakes, from mega uh, tornadoes and tsunamis. Because you think it's not going to affect you. So only when inevitability is going to be obvious, that's when people are going to say, oh, hold on a second. I think before the Campi Flegre in Italy blew up, I think I heard something from this Societa Creativa guys in Italy who were trying to warn me only a few years before that. And then they had some kind of conference only three months before that volcano erupted. And right now I'm opening my feed on news app on Apple and I'm being suggested an article from Discover magazine only two hours ago. Is it time to start worrying about Compi Flegre? Alex, I would like to ask you as somebody who spends a lot of time during the year in Italy, is it time to start worry? And do people in Italy realize it's might be about time? I am in Italy right now and uh, walking around the streets, the sign is shining. <laughs> you don't see, you don't see people worrying or... Gelato is still delicious. Gelato is still delicious. Pizza is nice. Yeah. I mean, life in Italy for people is not sweet with the prices of electricity really gone through the roof. But people still have karaoke. Yesterday was a Sunday. They were singing and everything in the evening. It was very nice in the, in the bar nearby. Today people were working all around. Uh, life goes on. You talked also about Societa Creativa that was warning people. When we talk about the value of human life, it's not only like doing it on paper. And I, <laughs> I would like to connect this with what we talked about, about San Francisco. And I don't know if we touched upon this already in, in the previous episodes, but there, there are several strange things about the Golden Gate Bridge. Because the whole construction, the cost of construction in 1932 was 27 million and 125 thousand dollars the whole budget mm. with everything financing banks got uh, four million for financing there were uh, some other expenses for engineering and everything so the total was 35 million dollars at the time and they already had someone had to push to spend a little more of the hundred thousand dollars for the safety nets at the moment for the workers and they did save life so they calculated i mean the workers were falling from the construction site it's not that they were so desperate that they were jumping off the bridge because lately the bridge was used for this people were jumping off golden gate bridge and the construction of safety nets began again several years ago already in december 2022 the budget was double of the initial estimate it was already at 400 million dollars and here i was thinking it is great that people think about all those people to protect their lives so that they fall on the nets on the safety nets under the bridge and that they spend hundreds of millions of dollars that they give to the construction companies that are building these nets once again. I mean, why did they take them off? Well, I have also my ideas on that because life was beautiful back then. Wouldn't it be better to spend these $400 million on improving the lives of people so that they don't go on this bridge for this purpose? <laughs> why are we that stupid that we agree on spending 400 million dollars and how can the budget be exceeded 
by more than two times from the initially approved spending. How come 100 years later we need to spend $400 million for a bridge that costs $27 million to uh, be built? How is this possible? <laughs> okay, inflation, we understand. But they built the whole thing faster than they are building the nets now. This is the crazy thing because they didn't request extensions. Everything was built on time. The information is published on the official website. Go, just go to goldengate.org and see all the data by yourself. Don't trust our words. Go and verify by yourself. But they built the whole thing. They really, even the roadway was completed in under five years. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. When you think about all these things and how we are spending money now, it seems like that this idea of giving away our power to someone else who will obviously, what are people doing when they have all these budgets in their hands? They will try to appropriate this money and, and do the good thing so that people accept it. Build the nets. This money, it did not just disappear. Some companies that are doing this, they became richer for 400 million and the idea that we need to spend all this money instead of improving people's lives on construction of uh, some sort of safety mechanism it really makes me think about just the imitation of uh, doing something good the same thing as we talked about the united nations and 76 years of existence and not a single problem solved only getting worse so, yeah, just putting the two and two together, we can make our own conclusions about how life has changed, how we became even more, I wouldn't say detached from life, but we cannot even lift our head from all the problems that we have to deal with to make a living, that we let all these things happen just under our nose. This is sad that we've come to having to convince people that we need to change the format of living and having this resistance as if they were living a great life. We did not encounter a lot of people during all our conversations in person or remote who said, oh, life is so beautiful. I wouldn't change a single thing. I'm so happy with everything. So yeah, let's just continue doing the same thing. I haven't met a single person independent of uh, wealth or their life experience. I wouldn't say that people are happy in general. And when you tell them, guys, we can change this. We just need to redirect where we put our attention, our potential, our forces, our finances. We can change that. They say, no, oh, you're stupid. You, yeah, just what are you talking about? <laughs> This really, this bugs me, <laughs> I would say simply. Yeah, you spend so much time and money to invest into current format of living. And what do people talking about? Information people share with each other. I'm sure that people in San Francisco complain about pocketed money on this $400 million in net and so on. You know what was another thing that really bothered me about San Francisco? So they built this residential tower right next to the building of Salesforce. So it's like one of the tallest residential buildings in whole San Francisco. And the moment they build it, the building starts tilting and shifting and uh, they already estimated it's about to collapse in a very short time. It was about to collapse and you know what? City of San Francisco, <laughs> whoever was making the decision to build a tower, whoever decided that it's appropriate place, that the foundation is fine enough, like no investigation was on it. The question was, how do we get more money out of our city budget to build a safety net for half a billion dollar at the Golden Gate and spent another hundred something millions on this tower, which they had to reinforce and put it back into place so it's not sinking anymore. And you know, it's just signs here and there, like nothing about this city seems right. And a hundred years ago, 
San Francisco was destroyed by the earthquake known as the Big One. And the Big One happened in the beginning of 20th century, 1906, I believe. Many buildings were still standing strong, even high-rises back then, but only the ones that were built up to standards. But most of the city was so mismanaged, it simply collapsed. And we're looking at the very same thing, but on a global scale, that there are very few managers here and there who are doing their job right. But it seems more as an exception. Because as it's been said before, every time there is extreme climatic event, the local governor resigns, the local police department chef resigns, the local management agency chef resigns. Somebody like the head of department responsible for preparation for natural disasters always resigns after a climate disaster. And then they say, it wasn't our job. Yes, it was your job because you're being paid for it. But you see, nobody wants to do anything about it. And sometimes it's even hilarious, like the public, I remember back in the day, five, six years ago, before they uh, built this new aqueduct, the beautiful bridge in Los Angeles with uh, lots of arches. Before that, there was one that was like 100 years old. It only had two arches. And people were complaining that the government is taking it down to build a new one. Yes, they did build a new one, but the old one wouldn't survive an earthquake and that would cut off half of Los Angeles from the mainland or whatever is like passing the LA River. So it's our lack of education on social level. Like generally, we are so sidetracked and Honestly, it's a very complex issue, but the thing is that about comprehending information presented by creative society, there is nothing, like it doesn't take any specific skills, it doesn't take master's degree, it doesn't take to be a climatologist to actually comprehend it. The thing is that even educated people, they all understand that we're saying the truth and that our model it's the, the only way out. But people are silent because nobody wants to stick out and put themselves into a position where they're going to stick out of the crowd. You know what it reminds me? It reminds me like a couple of days ago, Robert Kennedy, he runs for president from Democratic election. He was interviewed by a journalist and that guy was also trying to pull strings. He was trying to do some dirty tricks over there and he was trying to do uncomfortable questions to try to put a tag of a conspiracy theorist onto Robert. And he asked about 9-11 and he was trying to put some facts. And Robert said, honestly, I don't know too much about that, but he's the kind of person that would definitely learn the subject and next time come with facts. <laughs> That would make this journalist put his tongue into the place where Joe Biden was advised to put his $700. Because when two towers fall in with explosions on every story of the building with the speed of free fall, and every specialist seen that says it's a planned demolition of the building, but they're not allowed to say obvious fact. So for one year, they're saying, we cannot explain what made a steel structure collapse from collision with the aluminum airplane fuselage. We don't know what made it collapse. And this is exactly the science today. They saying, we can explain why temperature is rising. This climatologist from Berkeley just called this on Twitter, bananas temperature warming because temperatures are going bananas. And people asking him on the very same Twitter thread, what is causing this tremendous warming? so many hurricanes and everything. And he goes, I don't know, it's something about El Nino. El Nino is getting weird. We don't know what's causing deep ocean waters temperatures to rise. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. They're trying to act like specialists who were working on FEMA team on the conclusion on 9-11 towers when they had to say, we cannot explain what it caused, because the only reasonable explanation is that was a controlled demolition, is not allowed. Therefore, because government said it cannot be so, we don't believe what our eyes are seeing. We're believing our ears and what we hear from governmental sources, that it couldn't be what it seems to be. Therefore, we cannot tell what it is. The very same thing is happening here.
There is a very obvious trend that deep oceanic waters warming up faster than the surface. The only source of the heat is coming from underneath the planet is the heating up of magma, which can be heated only by the core of our planet. There is no other source of energy in our planet. And our core only receives this energy from outside, just like x-rays can penetrate the skin but cannot penetrate the bones. The external cosmic radiation penetrates our planet, our bodies, everything, except for the core. Bounces of the core, heats up the magma, magma goes up, things, the plates from within, heats them up, and the ocean. And it's a very simple model. You don't have to be a genius or you don't have to have a master's degree from Berkeley to comprehend it. Yet, we have one PhD from Berkeley who completely understands this fact and presents this information in the Global Crisis Conference, like John Undid. And we have another climatologist from Berkeley who brags about being climatologist and uh, using words like bananas temperature rising only to attract attention to himself, but hiding the very obvious fact that he knows perfectly well that the heating up is coming from within and cannot be caused by some imaginary CO2 percentage because only 1% of that 0.0.04 is caused by anthropogenic emissions and the rest is coming from natural sources sources like the ocean and the forest, and he knows perfectly well about it. But he cares more about getting more followers on Twitter rather than conveying truth to the people. And this is society we live in, and this is, again, you in his shoes would be acting exactly the same, because you don't care about general population, you don't care about saving humanity. These words are just nice words for the beauty contests, they're not being taken seriously by anyone in our society, unfortunately. When you see in people who spend in their time, resources, trying to convey this information to you, like heroes, participants of the creative society movement, you're thinking they're either crazy or they're probably getting something else out of it. My friends, participants of the creative society project understand perfectly well that without this project being implemented, there is no future neither for them nor their children, because in green zones you will perish a little closer to 2036, and in the yellow zones and in the red zones you will disappear faster. But the result is going to be the same. And what do we exchange it for? Our convenient silence of our science, and not only science, but ourselves as well, is exchanged just for this warm bath of comfort that is going to end up very suddenly when the ceiling is going to hit the floor. And this is about to happen. Another thing, in 2021, Ida hurricane destroyed the Grand Isle of Louisiana, right next to New Orleans. And what are we seeing? The mayor says, until there is one grant of soil to put American flag into, we're gonna rebuild the Grand Isle, we're gonna spend trillions of budget money, but we're gonna preserve the place where I can receive salary. Because what else the guy is gonna do? He's not needed anywhere besides that little barrier island. And they keep spending a lot of money into rebuilding that island, which is gonna be destroyed very soon, rather than spending the very same money to build what has to be built in the places where it's going to be useful for the people. And we discussed that multiple times at the Creative Society. These are just obvious facts for anyone who's digging a little bit deeper. And I was happy to see that many people on Netflix, and I would like to say that Netflix is doing a very good job, not only with Ancient Apocalypse, which was a very remarkable documentary, but also the Earth Storm series, which we watched, uh, contained a lot of information about Tornado Alley getting bigger, Dixie Alley getting bigger, which is a second, e even more severe alley when it comes to tornadoes. And the Giuseppe Mastro Lorenzo, who was participating at the Alatra International Forums and who was participating at the very early stages of the Creative Society, was one of the speakers. And he described in very beautiful words, as any Italian can speak very beautifully and with, with nice images, he actually described what's going to happen to the area of 
beloved southern Italy of beautiful cities, historical cities in the nearest future. It's actually kind of interesting. I believe a lot of information he has, Giuseppe gained from interaction with Alatra International Public Movement, which is great. Even in this way, if it's shared with the world, it's great. The thing is, in the film, they didn't emphasize on the urgency of taking action. They rather left it up to the people to decide what actions needs to be taken. But even in this form, that is important. And you know what? I was watching this documentary only yesterday, and there was one Mr. Goldfinger from Portland. <laughs> yes. He's a scientist, and he's studying the Earth core, actually, the layers that they taken out. Uh, he was emphasizing that San Andreas Fault and the North Cascadia Fault are about to have a synchronous earthquake and he was standing on one of these ugly bridges across portland and they're really nasty and ugly guys <laughs> you have to get better bridges over there but he was saying that when i'm looking over portland i cannot help but see just big piles of rubble and i don't want to share doom and gloom but this is true this city is not built to withstand a significant earthquake which is definitely coming up in here in the nearest future therefore if you already know about it if you hear these people even on mainstream netflix tv show they telling it straight to you guys move away from these areas check the maps creative society presented and check those green dots i know it's in ohio i know some people in comment section say it's better to die than move to Ohio. But believe me, <laughs> you're only saying that right now as a joke. But when the situation is going to get serious, there will be empty shelves. There will be lack of resources. The whole Los Angeles area is connected with three roads with mainland. And I'm talking about mainland, like whatever is behind those mountains. You're not going to get out of there. There will be lack of supplies and people are very well armed, even in such a liberal state as California. There is a lot of guns, guys. And you know that during the pandemic, people were buying toilet paper because they were scared and guns because they were scared. So, guys, a lot of people, well-equipped people who are ready to shoot each other for roll of toilet paper or canister of gasoline is our inevitability and there will be no resources and not enough because everybody's hoping that the government will be there to protect them from this lawlessness guys please think twice people who trusted governments turned into ashes in lahaina already those who trusted their guts are the ones who are still alive and were able to share with us their terrible stories of escaping Lahaina, of staying in water for up to eight hours when the military base was only 30 minutes flight so helicopter could be there amphibious ships could be there pick them up from the water nobody came people because nobody cares about the people except for us the actual people who want to live so guys let's share this conference with the people and let's share our feedback if you really want to take action but we all understand that you're not gonna do it because you have things to do the sun is still shining coffee is still bitter gelato is still sweet and if people in napoli will escape it's good if they're gonna be stuck in narrow streets well the government is gonna say it is what it is and look the count of people perished in Lahaina went down, not up. So the government is apparently doing great. We don't see people complaining and sleeping in the streets, so the government is doing great. You see this trickery, how conveniently and easily they convinced us and made us forget about these things. But it's not because they are so good at trickery, it's because we're willing to get tricked, only to get this uncomfortable thing away from us. We don't want to think about those things. We have our lives and our plans and everything. And that's the problem, guys. We will realize it later, but then there will be no time to fix anything, unfortunately. Yes, and I wanted to end on a bit of a joke like this old anecdote. A terminally ill patient asks the doctor, Doctor, will I live? And the doctor answers, Yes, you will live for some time more, but you will not like it. 
And this is what is going to happen with life on this planet if we do nothing. Let's stop pretending that nothing is happening, that things were always the same, they were not, and we need to do something about it. Not just something, but uniting everyone and changing this world for the better. So don't be shy, there is nothing to lose, really. And you will see that more and more people will wake up because of you, because of what uh, you are doing, spreading the information around and just asking the right questions. And when people answer by themselves to these questions, this becomes their own answer and they will hold to it and they will spread this information forward. Thank you guys for listening. Stay tuned. We will be back soon. See you guys. Bye.